so this was just one of those things that um, yeah, came out of lockdown, really. Um, as I suppose we've all done over time, looking at Google Earth, seeing if you can find any anything new, anything interesting. Um, so I started off looking at uh, sort of Knock Farrell, um, but also looking at it from a perspective of the LiDAR, which is available. Um, I was kind of just a little bit intrigued by um, the uh, findings at um, Tapper North. And I just kind of wondered whether there's anything similar going on um, around Knock Farrell. So, so I downloaded the, the LiDAR, which initially um, isn't terribly inspiring, that's all you see. Um, but obviously this is just raw data. So you can start then to develop it, see what else you can find. So the obvious initial processing that you can do is just putting on the um, analytical hill shade, which is what we're seeing hopefully now, which gives us sort of a vague impression of the, the terrain, the topography, but not again terribly inspiring again. It's a bit washed out up at the top there. Um, so a little bit further processing. Um, one that I find particularly useful is the slope. So with this, what we're looking at is anything which is sort of horizontal is shading bright, vertical is black, and anything in between shades of gray. But then you can start adding more different processing on top of that to highlight um, other sort of features and try and lift them out. So this is with what's called sky view factor. So this is really showing how open or closed an area or a feature is. So we're beginning to bring out some of the features here. Don't know, can you see my little hand waving around mm -hmm. yeah. on, the, on the screen? Yeah, as I'm pointing to things, can you see that? Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you look at particularly um, the sort of depression here, it's now beginning to, to show. And then further sort of processing really now is beginning to lift out the, uh, the sort of the ramparts, the uh, excavated trenches and so on. So this is really what I was playing with. Uh, and just having a general look around, seeing if I could find anything interesting. Um, certainly, yeah, I wasn't seeing the sort of the number of platforms that were evident on Tap and North. So I then sort of thought, well, I'll leave I'll leave this and see what else I can find. So scrolling around, this is pretty much what I was doing at the time. Seeing if there are any other features. Found this, perhaps a bit of terracing going on. This is just by the shore of Loch Usi now. Again, just looking around. There's a couple of circular features here, which could be Something or nothing. I've been led astray with animal feeders in the past, so <laughs> don't want to make too much of those. Coming across closer towards uh, Mark Farrell's sort of settlement, which is here. Seems to be something going on there, perhaps an old farm sort of something. But obviously looking at these things, you're trying to correlate as well with um, the HGR to see if there's anything um, already recorded. And then I happened upon this. Ooh, I thought. Circular, external bank, internal ditch, platform in the middle. So I was rather excited by that. Adding a little bit of color. And also a bit of 3D. Uh, rendering, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, are we seeing that okay? The 3D version, yes, beautiful. Yeah, that modeling, all right. So, yeah, very excited by that. Certainly looks to my eye hengy form. Um, a couple of these, what look like here, like uh, sort of trackways, uh, vehicle tracks, are actually about seven or eight meters apart. So, again, rather interesting little circular feature there as well. 
Um, try doing a few measurements as well to oop, didn't work very well. Try that again. So about 20 meters across. Um, just as lockdown was lifted, I thought, well, yeah, it's probably just within my patch. I could probably take a little excursion out there. So I had a look at it and I was pretty convinced by what I was seeing. Um, but as is the case in anything, um, you know, of any sort of academic endeavor, um, really consensus is key. So as you can imagine, terribly excited at the possibility of this being a new henge. Um, contacted Roland and uh, Jonathan, I think. But I nagged Roland to have a look at it, even though he had a bad back. Um, and yeah, I think things moved on from there, didn't they, Roland? Indeed. If, um, if we just think about the initial data that you had, this is publicly available data, Andy? This, yeah, this is publicly available data. Um, it's limited in its coverage. Um, I, I believe that it was the CEPA or the Environmental Agency, something like that, um, that produced the data. Um, it's publicly available, uh, as I said, but coverage is limited really to water courses, locks and shoreline. Um, so in terms of Scotland, the coverage certainly is patchy at best. Mm. And um, for people like me, it's just magic that you can take, you know, the first screen that you started with, that sort of grayed out data and, and put it through a processing on your computer. And yeah, I mean, wonderful coloured coloured <laughs> image. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the raw data is, as I, uh, yeah, as I say, it's fairly uninspiring. You know, it's just. Uh... <laughs> we'll come in in just a moment, um, but it's just basically the height represented as sort of shades of um, of grey. There we go. So this is this is how the raw data looks. Um, but then there are so many different processing algorithms to start lifting out um, detail. We haven't got that yet, Andy. Pardon? We haven't got that yet. We can, we're still seeing your 3D image. Oh, yeah. Hmm. How do I get rid of that? I have to say my computer is a little bit sluggish, so I might have to stop clicking on buttons for a moment and uh, wait for things to catch up. Are you seeing that now? No. Hmm. Well, what if I, I just wonder if I stop sharing it and resharing it, whether it will refresh. I think, in a way, I was just emphasizing that that first screen you showed us was just grayed out, um, yeah. very unimpressive. Um, but by applying, um, by putting it through, all of this done in QGIS. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Um, there are other sort of uh, programs that you can use. There's a very good one called um, the Relief Visualization Toolbox, um, which you can plug in an image such as the uh, the raw data. And it will throw out a few uh, processed uh, layers, which you can then re-import into QGIS. Uh, but yeah, basically, it's all uh, it's all done in QGIS. Okay, so um, I know of uh, one, certainly probably two other people in Mosas who might have the capacity to do this, but it, it still is magic to me. Um, Andy, I'm happy now to move on to to my part of the presentation. Yeah, is there I'll... anything more that you'd like to say? And not really. I mean, it was, you know, I, was saying, I was just very excited to sort of find this. Um, it's not every day you find a henge. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, be interesting. Now. Okay, so if you, were able to, if you were able to stop sharing your screen, yeah. I'll share mine and uh, we can take it from there. That's great. Yeah.
Okay, so can you all see that last, roughly that last picture of Andy's? Say yes or no. Yeah. Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, those were the sort of images that Andy sent across, uh, and and he also sent a profile image, and just remarkable it, that um, he it looked hengiform. Um, and I, let's just pin down exactly where it is. Um, so not barrel at the top. Um, it's in the woodland. Um, and because it's in a woodland, uh, it's completely un invisible to aerial photographs. Um, it's also wasn't on any of the previous maps that we know of this area, including the first and second edition Ordnance Survey. Um, I think the first edition Ordnance Survey calls that bit of woodland Blackwood. Um, so uh, Andy has talked about that it, it it looks like a henge, and <laughs> I have to say I thought, well, it looks like a henge, um, but then I would say that, wouldn't I? Because <laughs> I've had a particular interest in Highland henges. Um, but um, when I did all my Highland henges, um, I, I worked my way around all of the ones that you can see in Scotland and even the, some of the crop marks where you can't see anything. Um, this is one of Jim Bone's images of um, the Kulboki henge at Tin again. Uh, and I put it up because I think it shows all the features that um, are commonly ascribed to henges. It's roughly circular, it's got an outer bank, inner ditch, central flattish platform, and one or two causeways, which are not particularly obvious on that image. Um, now it's interesting that that um, modern understanding of what a henge is uh, does not apply to the most famous henge in the UK, uh, which probably isn't a henge in that definition. So Andy said he went out to have a look at it. Um, he took some photos of the site um, and uh, then eventually went uh, lockdown eased a bit and I could get out um, and then I um, arranged to meet um, and that's roughly <laughs> that pole is it, that ranging pole is in the middle of uh, what seems to be the henge um, so you can see fairly wooded fairly vegetated um, now Anne is a fearsome um, field surveyor because uh, we arranged to meet at a certain time and by the time I got there she had already been there for some considerable time um, and put in flags to delineate all the break of slopes all the way around this structure um, which was uh, something I hadn't quite thought of myself um, but really helps partly for the photographs but also partly um, so that we could do some e measurements and what we're doing is we're standing here uh, in the middle, no, we're standing on the outside, um, looking across the causeway um, of the henge, um, and that there's a, a rucksack um, roughly in the middle there, um, which is the center of the henge, center of the structure. Um, and that's, uh, that pole is on the top of the causeway and uh, we're looking sort of sideways on it. We're looking, if the causeway is roughly southeast in the southeast section, we're here looking west. Um, and if you turn around a bit, the causeway is um, in the bottom left corner, it goes that way, and that's the ditch going round, and this is the bank going round. As you can see, very heavily vegetated. Um, the, uh, as you go around the western side, um, Anne's flags delineate the edge of the platform and the ditch and then the bank. I'm not seeing any of this, Roland. I'm only seeing what we were seeing from Andrew. You're only seeing, say that again? What, what, what Andrew left us with. I'm not seeing any, not seeing any of yours. Can I ask? Sorry? Okay. Can I ask someone else? Can you see my presentation? Yes. 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 No problem. Yes. yes. I can see it. Mm -hmm. um, so, Pam, it might be worth you coming out and, and going back in again. <laughs> How do I do that? Okay. Sorry about that. But um, 
I'll uh, I'll keep going. So I don't yeah I don't know why you're stuck. Anyway, so um, edge of platform, ditch, uh, and bank. Um, there is a suggestion of a northern causeway as well. Um, hinges can have one or two causeways. This, I have to say, looks a bit more modern than the causeway in the southeast corner. Um, but as a result of um, Anne's flags and us uh, spending about half an hour with the tape measure, um, we produced this picture of what the hinge seems to look like. Um, notice the profiles um, at the top of the screen. Um, so the, the left and profile is, is going this way, uh, where you've cut through the, beautifully the banks um, and the ditches. Um, the top right, the northern pro, north south profile, uh, goes through here. So it's a little bit, because it is north south, but it is a little bit uh, atypical. Um, well, um, there's no diagnostic test or litmus test for hinges, um, but this structure does seem to fit that um, series of features that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think on the, um, it's now on the HER uh, and uh, we've applied for it to be scheduled. Um, and I think everywhere it's written as a probable hinge on the basis that it's very hard to say it's definitely a hinge when we don't really know what a hinge is. Um, the, uh, if you look on the HER, uh, as I've done this week, um, you realize that there are something like 33, 36 hits or hinge. And some of those are just a circle in the grass that someone saw from a hill. Um, and some are beautiful hinges. Uh, and there's quite a scatter. Um, but anyway, I, I, on a purely subjective basis, um, I identified 18 hinges in the Highlands that I think are reasonably authentic, um, including some crop marks. Um, but they're fairly convincing crop marks. Um, if we just look at, you can see that there's a sort of scatter. There's a scatter around Easter Ross, a scatter around um, East Sutherland, and then um, up here, uh, and then a scatter around in the west. Anna's got one just at the back of her. The three that have been excavated so far is that one uh, at the top, that's called Palihua. Uh, there's one here, it's probably that one there called Akinduik. Um, no, that's probably Akinduik. Akinduik um, on the way to uh, Leg. And then just on the, what's the third one? Oh, and the third one is Migdale. No, I've got that wrong. That's probably Akinduik and that's Migdale. But anyway, just outside Leg, Migdale, and then Palihur, they've been excavated. Um, and interestingly, Roland, you were right first time. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Anne. I need all the help I can get. Um, the, uh, the, the interestingly, the, the date that come back from excavated hinges are sort of middle Bronze Age in the Highlands. Um, traditionally, hinges in England have been thought to be uh, Neolithic, um, but certainly. The highland hinges tend to be smaller and of uh, a later date. Uh, so let's have a closer look at those. Um, the bottom one, Dugary Wood, that's, I think, well, I think it's a hinge. It's a very convincing crop mark um, just outside Muir Board. But there are these three really nice hinges um, at Arkelty, Conanbridge, um, and just outside Kulboki. Um, and then the new one just fits quite nicely into that pattern, into that area. So let's, if we look at that area uh, in a bit more detail, um, I've, this is a, a clip from past map and the, the, the gray, the greeny gray dots are um, things that Canmore finds of interest. 
Uh, there are sort of odd houses, buildings um, scattered around, but a lot of what Canmore has to say about Loch the Sea um, is um, that it, it's got burnt mounds, hut circles, um, cut mark stones, evidence of um, a, a good Bronze Age uh, habitation pattern. Uh, interestingly, there's no, I, I wanted to, I bet there's a, a, a Cranog, and I kept thinking, I'm sure there's a Cranog on Lakusi, but there's no archaeological record of a Cranog on Lakusi, and perhaps we can discuss that later. Um, although Cranogs might have been a bit later, might have been Iron Age rather than Bronze Age. Um, when I read up about the Knockfarrel Fort, just off the top um, of your screen, um, although it's, it's a bit tripied Iron Age fort. There is evidence, apparently, of an older fort there. So that could well have been Bronze Age too. Um, and those cut monk stones, I have to say, I didn't know that they were there. Um, but they are, certainly the one on the top left is, is really nice. That's built into the wall of a, 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 a hut circle. Um, and if we think about these, the diameters of these fairly small hinges um, that we have in the highlands, those are my 18. You can see that knock barrel is sort of very much um, in there with the rest of them. Um, when I produced this bar chart, uh, Dugri Wood stands out as being so much bigger that that did make me wonder whether I should have included it in, in a list of appendages. Um, uh, we can, we could discuss that as well. So, um, actually, yeah, just before we go on to questions, um, Richard Bradley, who who excavated um, at Pullyhoor, right up in Caithness, uh, wrote a book about uh, henges, and the title of it, uh, "Stages and Screens," sums up to me the dilemma about. What on earth were these structures for? Because um, when, they, when they've been excavated both in our area and other areas, they don't seem to have a lot inside them. Uh, the Akanduic ones just outside Leg did have a couple of burials inside them, but generally they, that's unusual. So they don't seem to be burial, uh, funeral structures. Um, so, so they're ritual, they're ritual or religious structures. Um, and the stage, the stage bit of Richard Bradley's book suggests to me that this could be a platform on which things happen, a stage, and maybe even that outer bank could be where people stood. That, that's my conjecturing, but it would give them a good vantage point. Or alternatively, if you can imagine putting um, a wooden palisade on the outside of that bank, um, you've then got a very private area inside, inside it, which could be the screen. So um, again, that might be something that we would want to talk about and just um, share our understanding about. So um, that's really a, a whiz through henges. Um, I wanted to set this new, what seems to be a henge, into a context of other Easter Ross henges. Um, and in particular, into the context of what seems to be a fairly substantial Bronze Age environment. Um, 